your favorite framework that'll never reach version 1, just announced their biggest release yet, and this version concludes a 6-year effort to fully redefine its architecture. React Native is one of the most popular ways to build native apps in JavaScript, and, thanks to its recent rework, it gained the performance boost needed to make it the perfect option for developers who want to jump headfirst into building for native devices with little to no fuss. Before looking at its main selling points and the seamless dev experience, let's quickly review what React Native is and how it actually works under the hood. In short, React Native is a framework that lets you build fully native apps using JavaScript and React. It works by combining React's declarative UI with a system of native modules and components which bridge JavaScript and the native platform. This allows your JavaScript code to control native elements and create a seamless user experience that feels like a native app. But, why do you need React Native when native platforms offer their own development solutions? Well, it all boils down to cross-platform efficiency versus native specificity. With native development, you'd build separate code bases, which means duplicate effort to achieve similar functionality across platforms. This approach can be time-intensive and costly, and, frankly, in this day and age, nobody has time for that. React Native addresses this by allowing a single JavaScript codebase to render native UI elements on native platforms. It achieves this by translating React components to their native equivalents, offering the look and feel of a native app without requiring platform-specific code. On top of that, most of the knowledge you might have from building web apps with React or similar frameworks can be transferred to building native apps. It is important to know that prior to this release, React Native used to rely heavily on an asynchronous bridge to communicate between JavaScript and native threads. In order to render a component or call a native function, the JavaScript code would send serialized messages across this bridge, which the native side would pick up, process and respond to. This approach allowed cross-platform compatibility, but introduced some performance limitations, like delays in updating the UI or processing frequent interactions. Additionally, in the old architecture, serializing function calls over the bridge quickly became a bottleneck, especially for frequent updates or large objects. This made it hard for apps to achieve 60 frames per second reliably. Now, with the new architecture, React Native moves beyond this bridge, offering a direct synchronous link between JavaScript and native code. This is powered by the new JavaScript interface and the C++ core, which provide faster communication and more efficient handling of complex animations, transitions, and real-time user inputs. So the new architecture is a complete rewrite of the major systems that underpin React Native, including how components are rendered, how JavaScript abstractions communicate with native abstractions, and how work is scheduled across different threads. These all are technical details you don't have to worry about when working with it, but you need to at least understand them and how they power the React Native magic. The new architecture includes four main parts. First, the new module system gives the React Native renderer direct, synchronous access to the native layer, enabling it to handle events, schedule updates, and read layout both synchronously and asynchronously. Additionally, native modules now load lazily by default, boosting app performance by only loading modules when needed. Second, the new renderer can manage multiple update trees across threads, allowing React to handle concurrent updates on the main or background threads. It supports synchronous and asynchronous layout reading, enabling smoother, more responsive UIs without jank. The new event loop processes tasks on the JavaScript thread in a defined order, allowing React to prioritize urgent user events over lower priority transitions. It also aligns with web standards, enabling support for features like microtasks, mutation and intersection observer. Finally, removing the bridge enables faster startup and direct JavaScript to native communication, reducing task switching overhead and improving error reporting and debugging. We'll review what working with React Native actually looks like in a second, but first, let's look at the five React Native concepts you need to know in order to be efficient with this tool immediately. First of all, apps are built using a very common component-based architecture, so everything on the screen ranging from buttons to whole screens is a component. The process of composing UIs is really similar to building web apps, and this becomes even more clear when you realize you manage the component's behavior and appearance via React props and state. Of course, props are immutable values passed from a parent component to a child, while state is mutable and manages a component's internal data. This data is reactive, so when something changes it, the UI will be updated accordingly. React Native uses Flexbox for layout, allowing you to create responsive designs without the need for platform-specific adjustments. In practice, Flexbox will work almost the same as it does in CSS on the web, with a few exceptions. Navigation will be a core requirement for any native app, and React Navigation is a standalone library which lets you handle navigation stacks, tabs, and drawer navigations to create seamless transitions between app screens. 
Finally, native modules allow apps to leverage platform-specific APIs, and via the new direct JSI communication, modules have reduced latency and improved performance. Now that we have a solid foundation, let's write some actual code and see the benefits of React Native in action. As per the documentation, the best way to experience React Native is through a framework. So we'll create an expo app and then define a navigation stack. This is where we'll put our home, camera and data screens. The home screen acts as the hub with buttons to navigate to the other screens. Again, note that this is a plain React function component and the only difference is that we are using UI components from the React Native package instead of plain old HTML objects. Next, let's look at something a bit more interesting. In the camera screen component, we'll define two state variables. Then, when the component is first displayed to our users, we'll make sure our app has access to the camera. In mobile development, permissions are critical as they ensure that your app respects user privacy and only accesses resources it has explicit permission for. If the user denies permission, we display a simple message explaining that the app cannot proceed without it. But if the permission is granted, we initialize the camera component and provide them with the live camera feed. This seamless experience is one of React Native's key strengths, handling complex native functionality with just a few lines of JavaScript. Of course, we're only scratching the surface of what the camera module can do. From scanning QR codes to recording videos, Expose Camera API gives you robust tools for building a wide range of apps. Before wrapping things up, let's look at another common scenario when building apps. In the data screen, we'll use the same use effect with no arguments approach to retrieve some data from the server and assign it to the internal state. In the template area, while the data is loading, we'll display an activity indicator component. Once the data is available, we'll display the items in a scrollable list. So, as you can see, React Native offers a very familiar dev experience while allowing you to build state-of-the-art native apps. There are numerous success stories of large companies using it in production, and this new architecture makes React Native more appealing than ever. If you want to explore other ways to build apps, you can check some of the other videos on my channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.